Is someone going hiking, backpacking, picnicking? I don't know. Maybe. I was supposed to. But then, god damn it, the snow and the rain and everything else happened. I had to cancel my plans. So I still eat like I'm on a picnic. <laughs> Right? Because you have to enjoy one way or another. Kudamalo here coming at you with another exciting video. Let's get into it. So these were my choice items that I picked today from Trader Joe's. Doing a little bit of shopping. Some things that I've never tried before. I'd never tried this. I tried it now. Did some previous videos on it. If you go back in the video series. Volpi? Volpi, there's an Italian for you. Volpi, maybe it's German. I have no idea. Hey, I thought this was Italian, but it's actually German. See? Right there, product of Germany. Cambozola does not sound German. I'm sorry. Anyways, this is like white people humor. I don't know. Maybe some of you might not get that. So, <laughs> giddy. I am so damn giddy today i'm not drunk i swear i hardly ever drink i don't like to drink i don't like the taste of alcohol i don't know that's another long story pina coladas if anybody knows where to get good pina coladas in the los angeles area let me know because el torito just fails me every time and i did find a cool place out in thousand oaks that made it made them good once or twice i think during happy hour too which was the bomb diggity but anyways Back to my picnic that I'm having at home because the rain <laughs> rained me out. Okay, so, oh, Ritz. See, see, I'm trying to avoid the Ritz. That's why I bought the blue corn tortilla chips from Trader Joe's. Trying to go the more healthier route than going the old, yeah, whatever that is. And Ruffles. I still got that bag of Ruffles. I haven't even, I haven't even finished this yet because I've been trying to avoid eating it because this is just, oh, I gotta get rid, I gotta get rid of this stuff. I gotta, my roommate just goes nuts and I, no, I, I gotta avoid it. Anyways. On this picnic, <laughs> just giddy, so giddy. And I'm not high either. I don't do drugs. Okay, so this is what's in the, the haul that I have from Trader Joe's. I got the Volpi, Volpi, Soprasada Salami. I got the turkey sausage. I got the pub cheese. I got the Bosque cheese, spicy buffalo cheddar. I got this Cambazola. Triple cream, soft, ripen. This is basically a brie meets blue cheese. Go back into the previous videos, you'll see it. Then I bought two different kinds of tortilla chips, blue corn tortilla chips, because I wanted to see what the difference was between the two. So these I've actually had for a week. I just I just rolled down the bag and then put these clips on them and they last forever. The, where do I start? Oh my God. Okay, so long video here, getting longer by the minute. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you like what you're seeing, you can bear it with me through all this giddiness. Okay, so... Short story is, between all the cheeses, if I had to pick one favorite, I can't. <laughs> I really can't. It's hard because they all have different tastes. Like, that's why it's cheese. It's got like a million and gazillion one different flavors and textures. These two are definitely spreadable, right? So I would say I would say the, the Cambazola and the pub cheese are definitely spreadable. This is what pub cheese looks like. It's basically like cream cheese and Tillamook cheddar had a baby. Right. That's basically what it kind of looks like. That's the flavor. That's what it that's how I would describe it. You definitely taste the fresh jalapeno in there. This is like gift from the gods. You know, I could I could corn chip this, potato chip this all day long. And it's just mm. I hope you're hearing that crunchiness because it's good. Okay. This is blue cheese and brie having a baby. Right? You see the blue in there? Pretty expensive, $12.99 a pound, but I guess it is what it is. If you want something smooth, spreadable, like a brie, mellow kind of flavor, but yet has a blue cheese flavor to it, then you might want to try this one. Okay, this Bosque cheese is interesting. It has notes of Asiago mixed with some funkiness, like some funky cheese it's it's a semi-soft almost like it's not a hard cheese by any means it's like it's definitely breakable like you can bend and snap it oh my god bend and snap like you can bend and snap it but you can see it's got a little more texture to it so this paired with like one of the salamis right the, the turkey summer sausage or the salami 
on a chip or on a piece. Oh, if I got a piece of sourdough bread right now, it would be so awesome. Like now you're talking. Like if I really wanted to do it up, I would I would stack like one of these on like one of these on the bottom. I put a piece of each cheese, a piece of each like the salami, the summer sausage, put the pub cheese, just make like a little mini sandwich that would be like this thick, you know, somewhere like this thick. That's what she said. It would be amazing <laughs> to have all this. It would be like an explosion in my mouth of just flavor. That's what she said. Too. <laughs> but I think giddy. I'm just so giddy today. But I think that would be the ultimate. Okay, so let's talk about this last cheese real quick. So spicy buffalo, buffalo cheddar. This would be something, you know, I'd bring on a picnic, that kind of a vibe party. You know, you get invited to somebody's house for game night or whatever. I think this is pepper jack meets Tillamook cheddar cheese. That's basically what this tastes like. It's got a pepper jack flavor more than, say, a habanero heat kind of flavor. I've barely tasted a habanero in my life. And, oh, my God, that thing was nuclear. And I know there's hotter peppers that are out there than that. But this does not have any kind of habanero heat to it whatsoever. I think it's just a spicy pepper flavor like an anaheim chili kind of like a may maybe like a detuned serrano chili kind of a heat to it it does linger for you know for a bit i think i i think i had a piece about this big and just on its own with nothing else i had a piece this big and for like 30 seconds i couldn't talk like it was it was choking me up from the inside but that's because i'm white people spicy you know so just saying so that's what I think of this one. So there's your three cheeses, right? One, two, three. And then the pub cheese was just an extra added bonus because this one I usually get on a regular basis. So I like white people spicy. So that's why I go with this one. The jalapenos in here do, do taste fresh. Like they're fresh chopped jalapeno peppers. They're green. You've got that nice grassy kind of smell to it. It's, it's, an, it's an experience. Okay, then moving on to the, the soprasada salami and the... Turkey summer sausage. You do have to refrigerate both of these after opening, right? How long they will last on a backpacking or hiking trip or whatever exposed to the elements. I guess it really just depends. Summer, winter, spring, fall, whatever. Comment below. Let me know what your experience has been like with these. Have you had them last an entire trip, three or four days? Did you get any kind of bathroom functionality, you know, action going on? Like, did you get sick? Let me know what your experience has been like. I'm not recommending to anyone to take these out of a, you know, outside of a refrigerated type of environment, but, you know, enter at your own risk, consume at your own risk, do whatever you want to do. I'm not recommending that, but if you've got the means to keep these refrigerated on your hiking trip, put them in a little cooler, you know, stick them in a couple Ziploc bags, throw them in some ice, that kind of a vibe, and they stay refrigerated, refrigerate after opening, Refrigerate after opening, you know, in that respect, I would say these are definitely two things you might want to bring with you on your hiking back hiking trip. What was the difference in flavor between these? So I, I did a whole nother video or videos on that, but this one is more saltier, more brinier because there's less fat content in Turkey. I think the way they make up for that is with the sodium. So that's one downside is they put more sodium into it to kind of make up for the lack of fat that's in there. And then there's your ingredients, all that good stuff. This one, on the other hand, has a little bit less sodium. There's also less, there's also, uh, there's more calories in this, I think because of the more fat content. So this one has 11 grams of fat for one ounce, which is, which is 28 grams. This one, on the other hand, if you look at the fat content, see it's only got four grams of fat for two ounces. So, you know, just saying, for your comparisons or whatever. Flavor-wise, I prefer the salami. Volpi, Volpi. There's an Italian for you. I think I would choose this one over this one. This one, I said, has a more saltier, brinier, deeper, salty kind of a flavor to it. It tastes like a turkey sausage would. Would I fry this up and put this in a pan and make this for breakfast sausages? I think once you cook it, the salt content would just really shine through. And depending on what you're doing, you know, if you're hiking, maybe you want the extra salt for water retention. Maybe you don't want to get dehydrated as much. I don't know. It, that's something you'll have to decide on your own. 
I'm not making any, any recommendations in that respect. But flavor-wise, taste-wise, just traditional salami kind of thing, I would definitely bring this with me like on a date, uh, you know, picnic in the park kind of vibe. I'd definitely bring this one. I think this one might taste better. The chew factor is a little bit better. You know, it's got a little more texture, a little more chunkiness to it. This one was a little more smoother. So the, the turkey summer sausage was a little smoother, almost like a pate, but not really. It's like a pate, but not. It's close, yet distant. That's how I would kind of describe the texture of this. This one's more chunkier. It's got your traditional like salami kind of a texture. Okay, then the last thing in this video was the blue corn tortilla chip comparison. What was the difference between these two? In my continued testing of these chips, I've been eating for like an hour straight. In my continued testing of it, giddy, just so giddy today. I noticed that even though this bag has been opened for a week, right? I, ro I roll it down, then I clip it with one of these clip things. These tasted fresher. They tested, they tasted like you had just opened up the bag and they tasted fresh. These I just bought, and even though I had just bought them, when I opened up the bag and I tasted these, these tasted like, I hate to say it, but they tasted like they were like a half a day stale. Like a half a day to a full day stale as if you had opened the bag and left it open. So I think that might, that stale, do I dare say it's stale flavor, might come from the sprouted seeds that are in there, right? So this is supposedly all blue corn. This one is blue corn plus sprouted seeds. So I think... I think that might contribute to that like crunchy. So this one's got more of like a, like a, I can never snap with the left hand, but this one has more of like a snappier crunch to it. This one, not as snappy. It's more like a thuddy kind of crunch to it. Flavor wise, they both taste like blue corn, but this one has a more earthy kind of flavor to it. Not, not grassy. Like you would think like a sprouted lentil or sprouted something would have that grassy taste. Not the grassy taste. It's kind of like an earthier, deep, rustic kind of taste to it. Salt content, I'd say is about the same, but these do have the edge, like just a touch more saltier. I think when you're hiking, backpacking, going on like that kind of a picnic in the park kind of a vibe, maybe that extra saltiness might be a good thing. You know, it helps you, ret helps you to retain water, helps you to stay hydrated, I guess. So maybe you might want that little bit of extra salt. These aren't salty. Oh my God, it's salty. No, it's not salty by any means, but these are just a touch more saltier than these would be. Like, how do I, how do I put that into words? Maybe it's like, you know, five, five to five to six percent, maybe more saltier than these were. So these are five to six percent more saltier than these were. And that's minor, very, very minor, but it is something of significance and notice that I had to point out in the video. Anyways, this was my Trader Joe's haul. So I got the corn tortilla chips. If I had to choose between these two, oh, tough call. If I want to stay healthier, I go this route. If I want to stay the traditional, like, hey, I want a, I want a chip. And whether it's potato, corn, whatever, I want a chip and I want something healthy, but I want something that reminds me of being a kid and tasting a chip, I'd probably go with these over these, right? Cheeses. If I had to pick one out of all these, it's a hard choice. But for something for like a picnic, backpacking, you know, that kind of a vibe, I'd probably go with this, this traditional one. Yes, you do have to keep it refrigerated. So that's something to consider. But, you know, pack some ice in your cooler and you should be fine. Oh, the ice mule coolers. That's another review coming up soon. So stay tuned for that video because I got one and I've been dying to review it. I've tested it out once and the thing works amazingly. That's so I'm going to put a link down below in the description. So make sure to check that out. But the ice mule cooler is definitely something you might want to consider bringing on like a boating, fishing, backpacking, camping, any kind of act, outdoor adventures. If you can stash one, like on a bicycle rack or something, you go, you go for like a bicycle trek. You want to take a, a, a like a lunch break and you want to keep all your stuff refrigerated and cool. Ice mule cooler, definitely something to consider. So stay tuned for that video. But if I had to pick one cheese from all these, I'd probably pick this one. My second favorite would probably be this one. Third favorite would be this one. Then last would be this one. This one just has that funkiness. It's got like, funky is good sometimes, like when I'm in the mood for funky. But it 
I didn't really like Asiago too much, and this kind of has that little subtle note of Asiago that I didn't really like. So this would be number one. This would be number two. Close tie. I mean, really, really, these two, these two right here are just, they're basically the same thing. You know, it's like, it's like cheddar with peppers. This one is cheddar with a pepper. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. It's just different spread abilities. But for like dip ability, chips and whatever, like picnicking kind of vibe, I would definitely go with this one. Okay, so then, so that would be my top choice there. And then again, going back to the salami versus the turkey summer sausage, I would say, like, I would definitely take the salami any day of the week. I, I will probably continue to buy this product because it does not have any nitrites or any of that weird kind of nitrate preservative kind of action going on. They both don't, by the way, right? If you look at the ingredients, where is it? Right there. You see that there's no, it's nitrite, nitrate free, which is good, right? Minimally, what does that say? Minimally processed. So that's good to know. But yeah, I mean, I bought them both because I wanted an alternative to like traditional salami that you get at, let's say, Costco that has a ton of nitrites in it. I wanted something that was an alternative that was a little more, quote unquote, healthier. Oh my God, healthier. That's a word for you. So that's why that's why I bought both of these to just kind of try them out. But I definitely like this one better. So I would choose this one over the turkey summer sausage. This has a place, right? This has a specific place. I think if you're if you're used to that salty turkey sausage, turkey bacon, you know, you might want to stick with this one. Or maybe you're not into pork products. This one definitely has pork in it. So maybe, you know, if you don't care. And, and I would recommend to use something. I would say to get the salami. But this ha this turkey summer sausage has a place. I think if you need like an extra salt kick, like an extra brinier kind of saltier kind of kick, you might want to consider this. Oh, there's an idea just that just came to me. Let's say you're making pasta, right? Or let's say you're making potatoes. You're just making boiled potatoes or roasted potatoes. And you're like, hey, this could have used a little more salt. It sucks adding, that's the reason why that's there. It sucks adding, even though I just thought of it, it sucks adding salt to a dish after it's already been cooked because then all you taste is the salt. So what I might do, this is just me. If you gain some knowledge from this, great. What I might do is I might cut up some of this turkey simmer sausage, chop it up into small little pieces, throw it in the frying pan like at the last minute with the pasta to kind of give it like a little salty boost that might be an idea. Or even this one too. You know, they're both salty. Don't get me wrong. Like salt is the main preservative in both of these. But sodium, you know, whatever you want to call it. I would I would definitely consider that option if you had made a dish that you felt like, oh my God, this, this could have used just a little touch of salt. You might chop either one of these up and put them in that same dish and then see what you think. Anyways, comment below. If you like what you're hearing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I will catch you all on the next exciting giddy adventure. And make sure to check out the description section. I'll put some links to there to some pretty cool products. These scissors are fantastic, by the way. I think these are in that description section down there below. Who makes these? I forgot. China Stainless Steel, but it's uh, whatever that name is. That's a German name. Messermeister, even though it's made in China. Go figure. Much like this cheese, Cambazzola, that I thought was Italian, also made in Germany. So take the Italian name, made in Germany. Take the German name, made in China. I give up. <laughs> I literally give up. I will catch you all on the next exciting adventure.